Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips once again, and this time we're going to talk about a very, very critical, important part of your scuba system, the tank valve. Now, I know you all think that the mask is the most important piece of equipment you have, but no, it's the tank valve. No tank valve, no scuba diving. <laughs> anyway, I was quite sure that every day, you don't think about it, do you? Every time you go scuba diving, you, you, there's, a, there's a valve on your tank, I hope so, anyway. And, uh, and you're always using them all the time and banging them around and turning them off and on and too tightly usually, too tightly on and too tightly off even worse. But anyway, we, we did a video about that, didn't we? Yeah, but you don't turn them off too tightly. The air stops flowing, stop. Anyway, tank valve was critical. And yet we haven't said too much about the tank valve. And recently, I got a couple of questions about tank valves, number one. And secondly, a diver called me a while ago and he said, I can't get the valve out of my tank. It was visual one year ago. Obviously, it was that well, I don't know, obviously, but let's assume that the dive store did a good job and actually took the valve out to do an internal inspection. Uh, you can't get the valve out. So I had to give them some tips on how to get it out. So I thought I would take just a few minutes here and talk quickly about tank valves. Now, we're talking about a standard three-quarter inch. That's the diameter. Actually, this is not truly a three-quarter inch diameter valve, but it's called three-quarter inch it's a machine thread or, or, or straight thread. You see the two sides are parallel. They're straight. And what that means is that this valve, you start it into the tank and it, and it spins in by hand, straight down to the bottom. And it comes right back out. There's no taper like water pipe. There's no taper. It's straight. Just like that. And uh, when you put these in, after you've serviced the valve and fixed the tank and everything else, when you put these in, uh, you, you, uh, you put a new O-ring on, because your O-ring sealed, and then you screw this down, and you screw it right down until the metal of the valve touches the metal of the tank. There's no gap. If you look sideways, you should not see a gap. You'll see the line where the gap is, where they meet, but you won't actually see a gap. Kevin's going to show you a picture that looks just like this. And this shows how the 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 tank valve comes right down and touches the top of the tank. That's it, just stops there. Now that doesn't form a seal. First of all, it's metal to metal. There's no way that would seal adequately at 3,000 PSI, just hand tight. But inside there's an O-ring. This little diagram you see on there, you'll see the O-ring, it sits in a groove, and the O-ring seals at 3,000 PSI. And if the O-ring is new, it should be every year, and a good neoprene O-ring, or Viton if you're using nitrox, but a good, a good O-ring, it doesn't need any lubrication on it. You don't really need to lubricate uh, these O-rings. In fact, sometimes the lubrication can be a problem because under constant 3,000 PSI, like if you fill your tank and then store it, it sits down in the basement for four months, four months or whatever, it's under constant pressure, that O-ring can actually be forced out, even though that crack in there is, is very, very small. Maybe digging it right now, metal to metal, and there's a little tiny crack in there, that rubber O-ring can actually be pushed out, called extrusion, and you see a little black bubble, and then finally one day, probably just as you went to sleep, after a long hard day of work, you climb to bed at 10 o'clock at night, and you're just dozing off, and boom! <laughs> the O-ring bursts, and all the air comes out of the tank, and that can happen. So you don't lubricate the O-rings, generally speaking. However, you do lubricate the, in fact, what I want to do, and people think this is simple, you take the valve out, clean it, put it back in. The, the proper instructions from, and I use the instructions from Catalina, from Luxfer, and other companies exactly the same, the proper instructions are surprisingly detailed. Three pages of instructions. Now, I'm just going to read the last few pages. All right. So you inspect the cylinder threads and the cylinder. You make sure it's clean. Okay. And then <clears throat> new O-ring. And they specify which O-ring, a hardness of 90 and uh, show, so on. And they explain that. And then Catalina Cylinders, they are the experts. They do this all the time. Has found that the easiest way is to place the O-ring on the is to put the O-ring on the valve. I I've never seen it, but apparently some dive store owners have put the O-ring on the top of the tank, then screwed the valve in. Well, unfortunately, when it happens, as they say here, the threads of the valve are digging into the O-ring all the way down. So the better way is to carefully slide this on so it doesn't get hurt. In fact, another thing that I just read recently, somebody recommended putting a single piece of tape. Uh, scotch tape, any kind of plastic tape, even masking tape, on the threads and slide the O-ring over that, which I thought was a pretty slick idea. That way you're absolutely sure that the O-ring gets up to the top where it belongs and it's not damaged. It's like new. Take the tape off. Now you're ready to carry on. Now listen to what it says. <clears throat> 
apply a small amount of lubricant Dow Corning compound 111 to the end of the valve and 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 the leading two to three threads of the valve. So, uh, and that Dow Corning 111 is the recommended uh, 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 lubricant from Catalina. But if again, if you're uh, using nitrox or it's an oxygen tank, get the get the proper oxygen compatible grease. But did you hear what they say? The top the, or the bottom, the first two or three threads only. Just a little wee bit down here. A little bit of grease around those first two or three threads. Why? Well, because the reason is because as you screw this in, that little bit of grease will be squeezed out and it will spread and it will completely coat all the threads right up to the top. But there won't be a whole bunch of grease in there. There won't be a whole bunch of grease jamming up against that O-ring if you don't want to lubricate it anyway. Just a very, very little bit. The first two or three threads, threads, that's what it says, two to three threads down here, and a little bit, and then thread it in. Okay, now, how do you actually do it? You ready? This is interesting. 3,000 PSI, right? Hand tightening of the valve should seat the valve completely on the cylinder. Hand tight. People don't believe that sometimes. I assume 3,000 PSI, hand tight. Oh, no, I got a hammer. They got a No, 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 you don't. Hand tight, because again, remember, all you need to do is bring, as a diagram this Kevin has on there, and bring the valve down until it touches the metal at the top of the cylinder. The valve and the cylinder are touching. You can't go any farther, not without damaging the threads. It's the O-ring that creates the seal. So they say hand tightening. Now, it does read, it does say some more. If there is still a gap, between the valve and the bottom and the, and the top of the cylinder, lightly tap the valve handle with a rawhide or rubber mallet. So you take a, a rubber mallet, I don't know, I don't have one right here. I take a rubber mallet and you tap on the valve here. The valve will move a little bit around like that, just a little bit, until finally it stops. When you're tapping lightly and it stops turning, stop hammering. Because now the metal of the valve is touching the metal of the cylinder. You got it? Okay. Stop. That's where you stop. Now, if you're really particular, and I would like to thank you guys that are watching my tech tips are in that class, you're really particular, okay, then they suggest <clears throat> if you decide to seat the valve using a torque wrench, a torque wrench, yeah, here are the following recommended torque values for a standard uh, 80 cylinder and also for the high pressure steel, 40 foot pounds is recommended. Maximum is 50. 40 foot-pounds. What the heck does that mean? For you folks who are not torque savvy, is that a word? Yeah. Oh, torque savvy. Uh, what that means is that there is a specified force that should be used to tighten this. You don't need it. Hand tightening, rubber mallet, over. But if you would like to, you can actually torque it. However, the torque is not very much. So somehow or other, you have to grab this cylinder and torque it using a torque wrench. This is a torque wrench. This is a torque wrench. You can buy these. You can get cheap ones for 50 bucks, expensive ones for 500. This is a very, very nice torque wrench. And also, all a torque wrench does is you put this onto a socket, <clears throat> onto an ordinary socket wrench. If you're putting the wheel nuts on your truck, your car, they're always torqued. Very important that uh, uh, car and truck wheel nuts are torqued properly. So this goes onto the onto the uh, the wrench, onto the wheel nut, and this is this is set. Okay, right there. My truck is 150 foot pounds. 150 foot pounds. This is 40. Yeah, not very much. Huh? And then you, and then you set this, and you go, you push, 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 and finally it goes click. You stop. That's 150. Or the scuba cylinder, that's 40. It clicks when it's time to stop pushing. Next one, click, click, stop, click, stop. That's what a torque wrench does. It actually specifically puts the right amount of torque or force, if you like, when you're screwing in a nut or a bolt, or in this case, a valve. Now, to do that, you have to hold uh, hold, hold the valve. And that's a little bit tricky because <clears throat> these valves are all kind of different. It does have two flats. Most valves do have a couple of flats. And so you can use this neat wrench. You can't just use a flat wrench and put it out like this because there's no way to use a torque wrench if you're using a big old adjustable or big old flat wrench. Uh, so you have to get one of these wrenches. It's called a crow foot, crow's foot wrench, yeah. Okay, they're close, but whatever. And that fits over there, you see, over those two flats like so. And then you can put your torque wrench <clears throat> into here, and then and, 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 and let's go. Click. Set it for 40 pounds. Click. 
just like that. Uh, uh, and there's another type of wrench which is actually a little bit better, but harder to get. And that's a a a a, 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 tank, a tank valve wrench looks like this. These are specifically made for different valves. So this actually fits over the valve, grabs it properly. It's the same thing. So if you wanted to actually torque the valve in properly, that's what you would do. You would get a torque wrench and a proper wrench that fits onto your valve, set it for 40 foot-pounds. 40 foot-pounds isn't very much. 40 foot-pounds means that from this point right there, you measure out exactly one foot, 12 inches, right here. And if you pull right there for 40 pounds, that's the right force. 40 pounds. Stop. Now the torque wrench does all that for you. So don't be trying to measure one of your wrenches that's 12 inches long and getting a fish scale. Technically it would work, but just do it like this. Holding the tank is the biggest problem you face because <clears throat> 40 foot pounds is not very much and, and uh, holding it is the biggest problem. So you can actually get a tank holder. I don't know if you can see this over here, Kevin, but, but Chris here at Simcoe Diving has made a tank holder. I think it's pretty slick. He's got a piece of wood in there with a rubber strip on it to grip the tank. And then he's put two of those great F-150, Ford F-1, I guess the other trucks have them too, uh, uh, loading strips on each side and a clamp hooked into there. So you put the tank in place against the rubber, you ain't got this, that tank is not going to move. Now you can put the torque wrench on top, just like that. <laughs> Pretty neat. Um, so there you go, guys. You can go on to the Catalina Cylinder website and get those same instructions. But I did find it really interesting that, uh, that they have a specific torque and that they say use a rubber mallet, which most people do, and most dive stores do. Uh, you know, Simcoe Diving here is a hydro test station, so they're a little more particular, I guess is a good word. And so they do things just exactly right, the proper torque and so on. And they avoid the problems like the diver, one of our viewers, one of your viewer members, who wrote in and said he can't get his valve out. The valve was simply put in much too tightly. Whoever did it uh, thought that uh, it's a 3,000 PSI valve, a tank and valve in there, they better put it in really, really tightly, and they did. No, no. So there you go. There's your instructions. How to properly install a, a scuba tank valve. I'm going to do one of these on the old half-inch valves as well because they're entirely different. They're pretty interesting as well. Anyway, I hope there's something in there of interest to you guys and you guys in dive stores as well. By the way, maybe there's something in there that might be of value to you. Talk to you soon, Alec Pierce. Tech Tips going to put some valves in. See ya.